Hello, my name is Jason Kunst. I'm a technical marketing engineer for Identity Services Engine. This presentation is focused around easy and quick setup for guest BYOD and secure access. Today I'll be bringing you through our new wireless setup tool in ICE 2.2 and focus on the BYOD flow for native supplicant and certificate provisioning. This demonstration will show you how we can get this up and running in about five minutes. The wireless setup tool allows you to quickly configure the wireless flows in a matter of minutes. The wireless setup flows in ICE 2.2 allow you to get ICE and a wireless controller up and running quickly with any necessary configuration along with basic customization and settings needed for your enterprise, guest, and BYOD use cases. ICE plays a criti critical role in enabling the BYOD model where employees are allowed to connect their personal devices securely to the network. ICE enables self-provisioning, which allows employees to register their personal devices. ICE provisions a device with its native supplicant during device registration. A wide variety of endpoints types are supported for BYOD. Device onboarding for wireless can be done via single or dual SSID flows. This demo will show the single SSID flow. Even though the wireless setup tool doesn't support ICE for MDM, with further integration and configuration, ad additional device posture may be used to enforce permissions into the network. Now let's get into using the tool. Now we'll go over to Cisco ICE. You'll see in the upper right, there's a couple different tool choices. Here we're gonna use wireless setup This will launch into a separate UI. As you can see here, there's three different options, guest access, secure access, and bring your own device. In this demo, we're going through BYOD and specifically single SSID. We'll go ahead and enter our WLC IP address, the username and password to manage it and also the shared secret set up for radius communication between itself and identity services engine. We'll commit those changes. Next, we'll give our wireless network a name. Here, I'm gonna call it 06-MyBYOD, and we'll pick a default VLAN that the users will use uh, when they go ahead and go through onboarding. We commit those changes. Next, we'll enter our Active Directory information. Here, we'll connect to Active Directory and join it so that we can use AD for domain authentication with our dot one X. We'll hit join. Here you can choose to override once your users are connected with certificate based authentications. So let's say if you had marketing or a sales team, you could go ahead and set up map mapping for that. In this scenario, we're just going to keep it simple. We're going to go ahead and use the default access VLAN for all of our AD connections. Go ahead and commit those changes. Finally, we get into customization of, of portals. Here you'll be able to go in and customize your, your portal look and feel. You hit on customize. You can go ahead and change header text, colors, languages as well. Once you're done making those changes, you can preview those by looking at the different options in the upper right here. You can look at it as a desktop or a mobile device in landscape or in, in portrait mode. We'll hit commit after we made any changes. Next, we can enter a friendly URL name, such as mydevices.demo.local. This will be used when the user is going to go ahead and manage their BYOD devices. Next, 
we'll click here to move forward. You also have the option to test any of your um, portals out, look at the look and feel before moving forward as well. And we're done. That's it. You see here a summary of all the different options that you configured. And now you can go live. As I said, you can get this up in about five minutes. Now we'll go ahead and look at how the flow works on a device and then later go into the configurations that was made from the tool. So now we're on the my iPad client. I'll go ahead and run through the BYOD flow. Go into settings, enable my Wi-Fi. You see the 06-MyBYOD network is created. I'll type in my employee credentials. Click join. Now we're connecting to the network using PEEP um, 802.1x and we're here prompted to accept the RADIUS server, the policy service node um, certificate. This is common on all iOS devices. Once you have accepted the certificate, we're now connected to the secure network for single SSID. Next, we go ahead and launch our browser and try to get to cisco.com to cause redirection to go through device onboarding. We get redirected to the BYOD portal and we can start onboarding our device. Give the device a name, my iPad, hit continue. Go ahead and launch the Apple Profiler and Certificate Installers. This is going to go ahead and, and set up a trust um, profile uh, with the iPad by accepting a certificate. Next, uh, we're next, we're going to go through ICE sending down a certificate to use for a certificate-based authentication. So here we're going through uh, SCEP to Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol. Um, so a certificate's being provisioned, pushed down to my device, and installed with a native supplicant um, profile and certificate to use for ETLS. Now that the profile is installed, you can see our, our SCEP enrollment request and certificate native supplicant profile were all created on the device. We click Done. And our final success page is displayed saying that we may now access the network. We can now try to go to our original site, cisco.com, and you'll see that we have access. If we go back to settings, you can see that we have the two profiles installed as well, with the same information. The BYOD setup is now complete on your client. Now let's go over to Identity Services Engine, look at the RADIUS live logs of the connected client, and see what needed configuration was completed by the tool. So next, let's go over to ICE and look at the RADIUS live logs. Uh, we can see that employee one who was first connected was redirected to a BYOD redirect policy. This put them into a portal where they could go ahead and go through the native supplicant certificate provisioning. And after that was done, a change of authorization took place and gave it a BYOD of access policy with permit access. Next, we can look at a work centers. We can go over to work centers, BYOD, where everything's there and easy menu for all the different options that we use for BYOD. We can go to network devices, see that our wireless controller was set up and shared secret was configured. We can go over to external identity sources and see that our Active Directory configuration took place. Uh, in this example, we didn't set up any groups, so that means any valid AD user that came through would be forced through the BYOD flow. Next, we can look at client, client provisioning and notice that our client provisioning resources, our native supplicant provisioning profile we had the 06-MyBYOD SSID added. 
So it means after the user went through the BYOD flow on the single SSID, it was re reconnected using ETLS and certificate authentication from, for that same SSID name. Next, the portal and components. Notice a, a My Devices portal was set up. This is so that the user could manage their devices. So if we go into that My Devices portal, and launch that portal test URL. We can log in as that employee and manage our device. Here you'll see that that BYOD in the My Devices portal picked up that same theme from the portal builder in the tool. You can see the portal page customization, how it, it went ahead and uploaded our logos and our background image. The same theme is used on our BYOD portal. So the My Devices portal is for the user from their desktop or laptop to go ahead and manage their devices. Um, the BYOD portal is, f is for the user device going through the onboarding process. So those there picked up the same theme and logos as such. Next, we can look at our authorization policy elements. Go into results, authorization profiles, and you'll notice that that, that redirection portal profile is made here. Now, we also use the permit access as well, okay? And then finally, we can go over the, our authorization policy and see these, see these two new rules here. The first one, the portal profile is used when, when the user first comes in with .1x using PEEP um, and they hit, hit that 06 MyBYOD SSID. After they're onboarded, they're, they next use EPTLS using certificate-based authentication and they get that permit access authorization profile. And that's it on ICE. We looked at the RADIUS live log, seeing that connectivity, also the configuration that was needed to, to allow that BYOD process to happen.